here and then we'll come to you. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, Council Member Willie. Yes, Mr. Riddy, would you please identify yourself and explain your involvement in GMO issues? Is your microphone on? Okay. Now I can run for office, I know how to press the button. <coughs> yes, my name is Walter Riddy from the island of Molokai, and I've been involved in the past 10 years with this issue on genetic modification. Can <coughs> you put his, excuse me, hang on one second. Nora, can you put up his mic? Thank you. Okay. Try again. All right. Yes, I've been involved with um, genetically modification issues for the past 10 years. And I've gone statewide. I've been able to go to all, all of the islands, this side of, of our islands and on the on Kauai side, that's where all the action is going on right now. In the middle on Oahu, um, not too much action been going on over there, except that they have half a million dollars worth of um, campaign funds that's been given to them by the GMO companies, so maybe that's why there's not too much action going on. So it's really exciting for me to come here because um, we don't have a council on Molokai. We have to fly to Maui in order to have our voice, voices heard. And we've heard a lot of rumors about the state trying to take away home rule from the county councils um, in, in Hawaii uh, last year in some of the legislation. So it's good to see that there's a place for people to come to at the grassroots level where we can talk, you know, we know some of the aunties and the uncles, I mean, we can really talk about what's bothering us at this level. So it's happening on Kauai and it's happening on the big island where people could not be heard any place else except at this level. And because they kept kicking the ball up, kicking the ball up, punting it to the federal government, and none of us can afford any airplane tickets or even how to influence the federal government. So this is our last resort. So that's why I was glad that Thank you. I was and invited here. Can you tell us just really briefly and quickly why we don't want to get to where Molokai is right now? Yeah, you Molokai. know, I think Molokai is a really good story as to what happened that might be something that could happen here. Um, on Molokai, if you come to our airport and you're a developer, um, before you can even rent your car, the word goes out, everybody knows so-and-so is on the island and he's b driving a blue Ford and they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And then at the end of the day, everybody knows where they went and everything. So our island is small and a really tight-knit island. And we pride ourselves in that. We participate in government. So the story of the GMOs over there is really interesting because these people actually came to our island and they were on our island a good five years before we even knew that they were on our island. Wow. And they turned into the largest employer on our island. So that information speaks for itself. You know, how did these guys come onto a small little island and become the largest employer without the people even knowing what was going on? So that's the capacity of these people. They have a huge capacity. So I'm, I'm sure that they're using this technique at the federal level and whatever they're doing at the federal level with this revolving door stuff. So I'm here to encourage you guys not to let that happen to this island because now when you have them like on Kauai where there's five of them, five major international companies and on Molokai we have two and they're the largest employers, you're stuck. You're really stuck. So you guys have an opportunity to look into the future and prepare for this kind of thing and set the rules and regulations that you want before all of the pressures that's gonna come down from these huge companies. You know, we're not talking about, the face of this issue is not the papaya. You know, the face of this issue is this huge multinational companies. That's what you guys are dealing with. So to be prepared, you, re you really gotta be prepared because you guys have more land than anybody else in this state. Um, if they ever learn how to grow GMOs on the A'a, uh -uh, you guys are really gonna be in trouble. Okay. So Let me ask you, um, are you, 
familiar with um, sort of the whole concept of coexistence and contamination in in France um, or in Europe. My understanding is they tried how can we do coexistence and you know maybe ten miles, twelve miles. I'm not talking about papayas, but things with with bees or wind pollinated. And they finally came out with maybe a hundred miles. It would work. Our island isn't a hundred miles across. I mean, I'm just trying to. I, I don't know with your knowledge in terms of these other places that have tried to work on these issues and do things. I mean, at this point, the only coexistence I see is one island does one thing. Our island, we say no. Uh, you I, know. Yeah, this is almost impossible to have both on one island. It's almost impossible. On Molokai, we have no GMO papayas that are going commercial. Mm. So we really, really protect that. We don't want anybody growing GMO papayas on Molokai because they get top dollar for their papayas. They do? Yeah. And About how much more do they get? I don't know the exact amounts, but all I know is that more and more people now are growing papayas because it's all non-GMO and, and there's a huge market out there for non-GMO papayas. Okay. So I wasn't aware so of that. You, so you can protect your island, but I don't think once you come on you can have coexistence on your island. It's like not with bees and wind and everything else. That's 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 okay. pretty much I know impossible. our time is tight, we don't have a, a lot, so I just wanna yield if there are others that have any questions or well. Okay, any questions? Um, well, no? if not, I'll go to ask one more question just um, in okay. terms of the cultural issue. I know that you're Hawaiian, and I know that talking to Hawaiians who have come to me, that the importance of promoting indigenous methods and indigenous seeds and, and the just that value of sense of place and heritage. Um, right. And I just, if you could spend just a, a minute or okay. two on that. Right now, there's huge negative impacts on Hawaiian culture. And that goes back to the way they're farming. They're farming on, on our island of Molokai. We have a reef system that's 14,000 acres worth of reefs. It's a national treasure. It's been deemed a national treasure. That's our icebox. That's where we get all our, one third of our food is free because of that reef system. And above that reef system on the side of the hill is all of these GMO companies. Mm -hmm. And all of that stuff, because when we did pineapple, Pineapple, the, the crop would go four years, maybe five years through a ratoon system. So you don't have to plow the land for five years. These guys are plowing the land five times a year because they, they, the cash, the, the crop, the turnover. So the soil is getting finer and finer. And when it rains, it all goes downhill. When the wind blows, it all goes downhill. It's having major impacts on our reef system. And there's no agency because these farmers are exempt from a lot of things that developers are not exempt from. So these guys, uh, the impact is really, really heavy. On the island of Kauai, the salt makers, they got all these guys above on the hillside from the salt makers. And now everybody's questioning whether or not the salt is is good to eat. So the cultural concerns and cultural impacts that are going on that are um, nobody knows how to solve, but it's, it's, it's on our backs. So you support, let's put halt, stay in place, and we can address these questions. No, I'm, 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 I'm cheering for you guys, you know, all the way. I flew all the way here just to, to encourage you guys to stand your ground. And we're doing the same thing on Kauai where they're having tremendous pressures, but they're standing their ground on pesticides. So it's, it's a great thing to see the county councils doing what they're doing. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we have one more question. Um, Council Member um, Ford, and then Council Member. Well, I'm not sure. Do you want to go first? Okay. 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 Say thank yeah. you, thank you, uh, Mr. Reedy, for coming here today from Molokai, and um, thank you for bringing to our attention the negative impacts to Native Hawaiian culture and to cultural, traditional and cultural gathering practices, which I think are constitutionally protected. Yes. And while we look at that more carefully now through our other land use laws, I think that's something really important that we need to remember while we're looking at this bill as well. And I think Ms. Willie did put it in the beginning of the bill and the findings and purpose. And I just thank you for bringing that to our attention again. All right, mahalo. Thank you, Council Member Ford. Yes, sir, I have a question. Um, my husband and I were on Molokai maybe four or five years ago. And one of the things that I notice about the reef, and forgive me, I don't mean to disparage the island, but the water was not nice, clear blue. It was brown. I mean, every place we went and looked at it on the 
south side, yes. opposite. Yes. Is it Kalapana? It, it's a, on the whole south side. Is the, the whole south system. side. Every place we went, the water, near shore water, was brown. Exactly. Was it always that way? When you were a child, was it like that? Yes, from the even from the pineapple days, with them just doing it once every five years, the runoff is horrendous. So now we're expecting it to get worse because now we're talking four or five times a year. So and how it's a has, big problem. All right. How has that impacted the reef fish and the reef life? It's in the, the inner reef, the reef flats. Yes. It's become almost barren. Okay. The reefs on the outside, a national treasure. It's growing, growing, growing because Lanai and Maui blocks all of the storms so the reef can grow and grow and grow. Okay. So what's happening now is, is that the chemicals also that are being put on the land are, are volatile and they go into the air and then they, they go up into our mountains and then it, it condenses rains. and rains and then on our reef system the key to the reef system is the springs all along the reef system and they provide the diatoms the basic food chain the bottom of the food chain that allows that whole reef system to so we're worried about the pesticides that are coming out in all of these springs along our okay. reef system. All right. So it's, it's, it's a huge worry for us. Thank you. I yield. Thank you. Any more questions for uh, Mr. Walter Reddy? Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Okay, so we go to Kona and um, Dr. Castle.